Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start Web Basics 3. And let me remind you what we've been doing. We have Compose, and we're creating a small web page. We've actually saved that web page in the My Documents folder in a folder called Basics 2. And there's three folders, Images, Videos, and Docs, which hold our resources, and the Web Basics 2 HTML wrapper is being created by the Composer program. So in images we have the uh, Sea Monkeys icon and that icon is being brought into the Web Basics 2 HTML file which is outside of those folders. So that's how everything is organized. Now let's apply that table trick. So we're going to go to File, New, let's go open up Composer page and let's open up our page which is Web Basics 2 and now we can actually do a little bit of work here. So let's bring out a table. Let's click on table. And now we can choose how many rows and columns we want. So let's basically choose one row and two columns. And there's a table. And we're going to drag our icon right into that table. There you go. And now over here we're going to start typing. So let me start typing. This is a website which teaches the basics of web programming. And I'm going to copy and paste this a few times so I don't sit here and type all day. And you can see immediately that I am getting word wrap. Now let's go ahead and take a preview of this. Now if I hit preview you see what will happen is not a whole lot happens. So we're actually going to not use the preview but actually look directly at the My Documents uh, HTML file. So first of all let's save this file and now let's look at it in my documents. And there it is and you see this table is not very attractive so we're actually going to make that table disappear by setting its border width to zero. So let's go back. One of the nice things about composers if you want to work with a particular element you just kind of double click on it and this table will come up. We're going to go to table and there's our border width right there. We're going to change that to zero. And you can play around with these different parameters and see how it functions and actually make it even more attractive than we're going to show you here. Apply that, hit OK, and now we see kind of a dotted line, which means when we run this, when we look at it in the HTML view, it will be invisible. So let's save that. Let's go back to my documents and click on the HTML page. And there you go. You got your C monkey icon, and you've got just the text without that ugly table. One more thing to do, let's add in our link. Links are extremely easy to make in Composer. So I've got my cursor down here and I can tab up or down if I want. I, I can hit return if I want more space or just arrow key up and down. And let's just type in something. We'll say my blog. Now all I have to do to make a link is highlight it and hit the link button. And it's asking me to choose a file or type in an address. We'll type in an address. It's http forward slash forward slash www.flexhacks.org slash WordPress. Now I am a hacker. That's where you hear flex hacks, but I'm a good hacker. I hack open source software, which means if I hack an open source software package, I make it better, it becomes open source as well, and the process of development continues. So in that sense, hacking is good, not bad. Hit OK, and now I have a blog. Let's go ahead and save that and look at the uh, uh, HTML page and click on blog. And there it is, my blog came up. We have very successfully built a basic HTML page, and we've tested it through clicking on the uh, HTML wrapper in my documents. But now I want to show you something else, and that's the HTML source tags. So if you look below here, you see normal, you see HTML tags, and this kind of show you the body, the table, the span, the different uh, tags in kind of a uh, table type format or diagram type format. But n the next item here is HTML source, and these are the actual source tags that are being generated for you automatically as you work inside the design editor. So let's go back and take a look at those source tags and let's discuss those in a little more detail. 
So we've clicked on the HTML source tag revealing the source and I want to now introduce you to Mike's big rule, okay? Here's Mike's rule. The best place to learn about computers is from computers, believe me. And so what I did, I'm looking at the HTML tags, I'm going, what the heck do these tags mean? Well, what I did, I went to Google and I typed in, hey, HTML tags. And a million sites came up, and here's one of them. Now, there's nothing special about this site. It's just a great site, I thought, that illustrated what each one of these tags meant. It's www.web dash source dot net forward slash html underscore codes underscore underscore chart dot htm and when you go to that site and there's millions like it here's a whole list of what all the possible html tags might mean and so what you want to do is when you see a tag you don't understand go to a list like this and start comparing what's in the list with what you see. Now let me give you an example of that. So what I'm trying to do here is show you how to learn, not necessarily tell you all everything that you need to know. So let's bring that table back up. So let's look at our type table and we're going to scroll down here a little bit and uh, here's some of the explanations of the different tags and so what you want to do is just go into your HTML document and go okay here's an HTML tag, what does that mean? Well, here from the table we see HTML begins your HTML document. Well, here's the next one, head. What does that mean? Well, here's head. Contains information about the page, such as the title, the meta tags for the search engine. Oh, okay. Let's go down here, body. What does a body tag mean? So you scroll down a little bit, and then you bring your uh, table back up. And it says the body, this is where you begin writing your document and placing all the HTML code. So now you can see as I compare the different code tags with my table, I can begin to understand and I can go back and forth. You can also edit and code inside the HTML tag view. So let's do that real quick. Let's bring up an HTML tag. I'll bring my table up. And here's a very popular tag. Let's go down to the table. And that's the B tag, which bolds. And so basically, it's a less than B, greater than, than whatever the word is, and then a less than with a forward slash B, uh, then a greater than sign, and that will bold your expression. Let's go ahead and copy that. We're just going to copy that right into the HTML uh, text and see if indeed that does occur. So I'm going to come along here. And I can see there's some text here. This website, uh, which teaches the ba this is a website which teaches the basics. So let's go ahead and put that right in there. And we're just going to cut and paste that right in there and see what happens. So let's go back to the normal view. And there's that word example. Hoo hoo! It's just so you can edit on either side, just like we've shown you in some of our other advanced uh, software systems. Let's pull this out. We can take the example out and actually now use that just to bold something. What if I wanted to bold just the first word, this? So I come along here and use that HTML tag, B. And then whatever I want to bold, just the word, this. Let's go ahead and put it in there, forward slash B. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the normal view. And you can see I've just bolded the first word. So very very easy to work to learn HTML and one great way to do it is to go between the design view and the source view and to check out a table like this and check out the different labels and see if you can get those working so it's really fun actually to learn HTML and easy to do with so much information on the web